Hello and welcome back to Moon Clan. My name is Farasi and today we are picking up where we left off last time. So just to recap a little bit here, we decided to keep Frost Whisper on as a warrior just for now and see how their journey arcs and maybe goes into a different path later on down the line here. But more importantly, we actually had a couple of cats become mates. So Sparrowstar, our leader, uh, decided to profess his love to bite Speck our medicine cat in front of the clan, which was really, really sweet. But as a result, Bite Speck did have to step down from becoming a medicine cat, since our current challenge only lets us follow the rules that are in the original novels of the series, being medicine cats cannot take mater kits. I debated having them try and twist that around, but it doesn't really feel true to the challenge to do so so early. So instead, we just have Lilac Chaser to hold down the fort as our brand new medicine cat and now only medicine cat. And we also have a new cat in Morbius Bear to join the clan. We still have a legion of kits, but we'll see how everything shakes out going straight into Moon 18 of the clan. Okay, so it looks like we're still hurt. Uh, we got our paw trapped in a two-leg trap last time and unfortunately got mangled. It looks like we did get the prompt for not enough healthy medicine cats, which isn't surprising since Lilac Chaser is new. But we also stand our ground against a menacing fox. Our victorious yell resonates through the forest, a testament to your bravery. So despite all of our injuries, we've really not been taking it very easy. Oh, Coyote Path and Stonefruit found a litter of two kits and they decided to adopt them. I don't think there's anything necessarily against that in the challenge, but I will double check just to make sure. Sparrowsar fought a big dog and was badly injured. Oof. That usually means broken bones, so he's probably going to be down for the count for a little while, too. Pigeon Flick has gotten a running nose, and Flood Kit feels relieved at the lack of pain in their head. Their headache seems to have finally gone away. Frost Whisper saw Rowan Kit, I'm assuming one of the adopted kits the other day, but didn't get a chance to meow hello. Bite Speck bickered about something trivial with us. Possibly about him stepping down his medicine cat. Swan Spot noticed Frost Whispers doing their best today. Weasel Reed is complaining that we never do anything helpful. And Whisker Kid is asking us how we're doing. I don't think it was Whisker Kid that we just absolutely destroyed the feelings of last time. But I still feel really bad about that. Okay, so the only mentions I'm seeing of adopting kits uh, comes with not taking a mate from outside the clan, which isn't applicable here, and that medicine cats cannot have mates or kits. So for both of those, it's just about the logistics of adoption to hide certain transgressions. So without anything in place, and since this is an established strictly within the clan couple. I don't think anybody is going to bat an eye at the kids. So let's go ahead and check them out. Okay, so it looks like this was their parent, Poole, who is a senior adult male, sneaky, masterful storyteller and great mediator who was a kitty pet. He's unfortunately passed away now, but he is glad that his kids are safe at least. At first here we have Liar Kit, which is a very pretty name. Newborn female with copper eyes and a single striped gray pelt. She is a daydreamer. Then we have Rowan Kit, who I'm probably going to change name of. I actually think I've got a good one. Sticking with the tree name theme. A newborn female with copper eyes and a single striped pelt as well. The only difference between them is that Liar Kid is just a little bit more blue, but Willow Kid is bullying. And I changed Rowan just because I associate Rowan so strongly with red cats and very clearly 
Masui ended up naming her Rowan I or something. She is not going to be very red coated. Alright, let's go through the clan real quick. Sparrow Star is taking time to master a particularly difficult skill. He is hurt with a broken bone, so he is going to be down and out of the count for about eight moons. Which is definitely unfortunate, but he's got plenty of lives even if something were to happen to this. And since he is pretty intellectual, I can see him mastering a particularly difficult intellectual strategy or, you know, exercise while he is in bed sick. Too bad his mate couldn't be doting on him as a medicine cat the entire time, though. So in fruit, meanwhile, is napping. Not really stepping up to mantle of leader or parent in this moon, it seems. Lilac Chaser seems like she's doing the best she can. She's checking up on everybody. We don't have very many herbs for her, but it looks like what we do have has been given to the warriors, and that seems to actually be helping. Since we can finally allow this to happen, look at how strong their feelings are for one another. I expect got tingled in some roots. Uh, they do have a neutral interaction with us this moon, so I'm gonna go ahead and talk to them and see what they've got going on. We try to sneak up on bite spec, but they trip you with their tail before it can even get close. I can tell it's you by just the sound of your paw steps, dummy. Ha ha ha. Then we've got Swan Swat, who's trying to set a good example for younger cats. You know... I don't actually know if there's any major restrictions for us making Swamp Spot a medicine cat after the fact. Since she is a great healer, I'm just thinking out loud because the only time we can make a medicine cat is if we don't have enough, which is true right now. And they are definitely warriors that become medicine cats later on in life, sometimes even after they'd already had kids. So I don't know whether or not Swan Spot would just be straight up barred at principle. So it's definitely something to consider. I really want to appoint somebody else as Medicine Cat this episode. So unfortunately, we may not end up getting Swan Spot in particular, but we'll keep a look out to see who could be a good fit. Here, Frost Whisperer, I saved this fish for you. What? You don't like fish anymore? You used to be your favorite when you were a kid. Heh, look at you growing up on me. Coyote Path is currently thinking about where they belong. I'm really curious as to what that means, just because I know Coyote Path is insecure and has kind of honestly struggled to mentor us because they are very young in terms of warrior cats. They're only, they're not even two years old yet. And now they've got a litter of two kids to care for that are relying pretty much solely on them, probably. So I can definitely see there being a lot of questions about where their path is going to lead and maybe even wondering if that's with the clan. But since we're stuck in camp and they do have some kids to watch out for, I think we'll talk to them. Coyote Path watches Raven Song and Coyote Path. I think there's a little problem with the generator there. Laugh together a little ways away, apparently too nervous to join in the conversation. Well, we can either leave them alone or help them socialize. Seeing as they are theoretically already socializing, we can try and help. We ask Coyote Path why they don't just go up and talk to the warriors. What? Interrupt our conversation? Are you crazy? I'd rather die than be subjected to that kind of humiliation. Uh, you would understand, Frost Whisper. I'm not confident like you are. I can't just go chatting with every member of the clan every moon. Hey, I don't do that either <laughs> anymore. But I can definitely still see Frost Whisper interacting with cats a lot more in their dreams than in the waking world. But we'll try and uh, boost Coyote Path up. They were our mentor after all. You really think so? Uh, Sarclan, I guess I got nothing to lose. Well, aside from my dignity, that's not really worth a ton. Here goes nothing. Coyote Path crosses the camp and awkwardly stands near the warriors until they notice enough to include them in their conversation. 
The talk is silted. Kyrie Path looks a lot less lonely than before. Look at us, fixing problems one loner at a time. This is something I know I think I was debating a little bit before. And I do think I'm going to go ahead and make Moon for her queen. She's mellow, which is, you know, a good kind of trait to have in a caretaker and a great kit sitter. And her current status this moon is allowing the kits to play with their tail, albeit begrudgingly. And I don't know, I just look at her and I see a really soft, soft-spoken cat. Like, pretty much just a daisy, but more of a mackerel, silver tabby. So I honestly think she'd be really well suited for it. Sorry if you can hear the cats having a race in the background. Show those scratching posts to his boss, I guess. I should be getting a new microphone here soon that will hopefully help reduce some of the background noise. Um, I actually did get it already, but it came with the wrong cable, so... Can't really get it set up without the cable, but hopefully by next video we'll have a better microphone. Alright though, let's go ahead and switch her over to Queen. Moonfern is now a queen. Permanent queens dedicate their lives to caring for and nurturing kids of the clan, ensuring their safety and early education. While most queens return to the warrior duties once their kids grow, permanent queens remain in the nursery, offering guidance to new parents and providing a steady presence for the clan's young. I did have a motive for making her a queen now, too. I think have, after having her own kits, going on to performing warrior duties afterwards, I think that can kind of allow her a little bit of time to reflect and see where she finds more meaning, where she feels like she belongs. And I can definitely see her finding it very rewarding to be around the kits in their own right too. So I think Moonfern is going to be a good mentor for the kids and a good constant presence in a nursery for now uh, at least until we may get in there and allow them like a constant presence with so many kids adopted in the past couple of moons here i think having a consistent presence is going to prove very valuable for the clan fluff kit was the one that we inadvertently hurt the feelings of last time and I still feel bad about that. So I think we'll have Fluffkit interact with Moonfern this moon. He's noisy so I'm gonna see what we can do that's gonna kind of fit in with that. How about we tell Fluffkit a story? Moonfern tells a story about the struggle of Leaf Bear but Fluffkit seems disinterested and dismissive of the struggles depicted. Compassion minus one. Well, that's not really what I was going for there, but nursery activities can impact a kid's stats and future role and personality, by consequence anyway. All right, we're currently wondering how Whisker Kid is doing, so we'll interact with Whisker Kid this moon as well. There's not really much for patrol for either Whisker Kid or ourselves, so this go. Weasel Reed is currently wondering if Kitty Pet life is really so bad. Since we had a bad interaction with him, we're gonna make it worse. Every cat can spit fire when they're riled up, but it's the ones who remain cool that win the fight. Well, look at you, living up to that arrogant sort of overconfidence, huh? But when it comes down to other possible medicine cats here, our siblings are the other obvious choices because they've got great healer and fantastic healer respectively. To be totally honest, I see Ravensong more in that position. Like, with a cunning nature, that can manifest in a lot of different ways, be it problem solving or political maneuvering. And Ravensong, I can definitely see him just being all around cunning. So with Bite Specs stepping down, I can really see Ravensong seeing this opening, especially with Lilac Chaser, who's probably very overwhelmed to an immediate respective position in the clan as opposed to being kind of newer pickings as far as warrior goes. Low on the pecking order, it's kind of I either earn respect now or I can wait until 
I'm 40 moons old, and then I may have a smidgen of respect. So that and all together, I just see him in this role for some reason. So I think I'm going to go ahead and actually make Raven Song our new medicine cat. He's in good standing, so there's really no reason not to. But I think he'll do really well in that position. Looks like Moonfern and Stonefruit's kits will be Prentice's next moon, though. Willow Kid is saying Mew. And her sister is saying Meow. But we got to visit the newest little members of the clan. Oh, right, we should also talk to Whisker Kit. Mmm. Seems like all Whisker Kit wants to do is watch the rain outside the den. You sit down beside them silently. They seem to appreciate that. Meanwhile, they're pestering older cats to play with them and they're saddest. So, I guess just a little bit more introspective of a moon, but our presence is appreciated. We'll go ahead and send out our patrols, though. Raven Song successfully gathers Zandalion for his first patrol. Lilac Chaser, on the other hand, is distracted and their patrol is unsuccessful. I can definitely see her really trying to reconcile what's going on because... You know, growing up, I'm sure she had a very projected path for how things were going to go. And then Bite Spec was like, psych, see ya, the whole clan is yours now. And then that probably derailed everything. Having Ravensong then come on as another medicine cat probably derailed where she thought she was going to be even further. Because Ravensong was a warrior. So he doesn't have the same training that she does as, you know, untested as her training may be. She at least has that much of an advantage over him. Alrighty, so for our mandated border patrol here, Swan Spot spies a fat rabbit on the other side of Clay Clan border. A tempting opportunity, but it may not be wise to trespass on different clans' territory. We have a lot of nervous and insecure cats on this training, or training, border patrol, so I'm not going to proceed here. I'm also not going to antagonize for the same reasons. If our cats get caught, then they all get a strike, and with cats that aren't confident, I don't think they would even think to take the risk. Okay, I only sent out a small hunting patrol because I wanted to send out multiple. And our patrol encounters a clearing where a lot of two legs linger. We've got exploring, towing, fishing, strict, and lonesome as our traits. Hmm. Okay, so I did just double check here. Cats with an adventuring nature are always going to proceed no matter the danger. I know exploring isn't really the same as adventuring, but... I'm going to kind of treat it the same here, and we're going to proceed and hope that they have at least a sense to stay away. Okay. A two-leg spots bite spec and crouches down, clicking softly. Bite spec hisses and flees. I'm really glad we didn't immediately break up the power couple. <laughs> Alright, we didn't get any good hunting patrols that moon, so not really very successful when it comes to resource gathering this go. We've got plenty though, so we'll be just fine. We'll go ahead and time skip into moon 19 for the clan. Alright, well this is an interesting moon for us. You found a new accessory, Large Luna. You choose the sword in a safe place for now. I wonder if that's like a lunar moth wing, maybe? Our mangled leg healed up. It doesn't mention any scars or weakness. But we immediately miss up and slip from a rock, spraining our paw. So I guess we probably either overdid it, or we just really weren't accustomed to how weak our legs have gotten the past couple moons and undercompensated for something. But during a fierce storm, you help evacuate the elders to a safer location. Your bravery and quick thinking earn you the respect of your clan. Which isn't too bad. Little Paw purrs so hard that they're shaking as they touch noses with Weasel Reed. Oh, I genuinely wasn't seeing that coming. Despite some questioning looks, Fluff Paw is firm in their resolve to be under Moonfern's tutelage. The future of the clan lies in the paws of the kids, and that's where Fluff Paw wants to be. With him losing compassion last time, I really hope he's not going to be like a bloodthirsty queen. 
As hilarious as that would be, can you imagine like a tiger sar that's like insidious and raising kits like from the time that they are born, basically? Like Daisy but bad? That would be terrifying when it comes to shaping a clan, honestly. Aww. Sparrowsar and Bitespec found a single kitten and decided to adopt it. It's Sparrowsar, so we're not even going to question the ethics of adopting it because he's a leader. He can do whatever he wants at the end of the day. The other cats don't have to be happy about it, but he can. Unfortunately, Morbius Bear does pass a red cloth. I was a little surprised that she honestly made it through last moon. But my guess is we ran out of Malane and that was curtains. Carrie Path is wowed by how bravely Frost Whisper fought the other day. Frost Whisper can't stand being around Tulip Stripe. Oh, that's a little bit of a different song. Bite Speck and Frost Whisper heckled another clean at the gathering together. Moonfern made Frost Whisper laugh again and again. How up help thinks the prey Frost Whisper is biting into on the other side of camp looks delicious. Raven Song moves Pigeon Fleck to the medicine to Cat Den, where the white cough that their running nose has turned into is more easily monitored. And again, Morbius Bears news. I'm a little surprised that those two inexperienced cats were enough for our clan. If I remember correctly, Lilac Chaser on her own was only good for 13 cats, but I guess we just hit the mark. Oh, Stonefruit was seen touching noses with a rogue. Scandalous. Scandalous indeed, that's going to be a strike for Stonefruit. And Missy Kit is scolded after sneaking out of camp. I don't think there's any consequences for Kits, though. Man, a strike for the deputy. That was Stonefruit's first strike, but he does now have a strike. He only gets two more chances. Okay, well I guess Ravensong did bring a lot of experience because we can now care for up to 38 members of the clan. Sparrowsar caught Fluffkit climbing a bit too high. I'm sure he does have enough time to really be noticing little details like that. Ravensong saw a kitty pet rolling around a two lake garden. And Lilac Chaser was startled awake in the wee hours by a vivid dream. Possibly a vision from Star Clan or a dream from Star Clan with her deep bond there. Honestly, between the two of them, we've got the medicine cat duty is pretty well rounded. You've got Lilac Chaser, who's a bit more on your spiritual side, and Raven Song, who's a bit more on your physical wound side of things. I'm just going to go ahead and randomize our mediations this moon. I think it's good to kind of keep things randomized on occasion because that also will imply that there's some inner workings, you know, that are happening behind the scenes to cause these interactions to occur. Bidespec has found an unknown stream. I honestly think he's kind of taking this chance to really explore the territory in ways he never could before. Being able to take risks is something a mess and cat probably can't do for themselves all that often. But we'll go ahead and talk to them. You notice Bite Specs sitting alone by the empty fresh kill pile. You pad over to them with the robin you were planning on eating. Oh hey Frost Whisper, what is it? You drop the robin in front of them and warmly ask if they like to share. Oh, um, are you serious? You give up half your meal for me? Uh, thank you, it's very nice. You still next to Bite Spec to eat your meal. The conversation, while silted, is pleasant enough. You know Bite Spec doesn't like to eat with others often, but at least they make an effort. When the robin is gone, you go your separate ways, having gained a new understanding of your clanmate. Bite Spec, since he's strict too, I can also see kind of sequestering himself in the medicine cat den. Like, and just kind of working through meals, so... He's probably got that added isolation that now he can kind of work through. Tulip Stripe is trying to set a good example for younger cats. And unfortunately, we do have to insult him. It's easy to criticize, harder to understand. I hope one day you'll see the strength and empathy. I really wonder what the nature of our disagreement was. Maybe we saw something in a dream that we didn't like or really twist our perspective of Tulip Stripe. Since he's got a sleeping trait and he sleeps a lot, 
we've got more opportunity opportunities to be walking in his dreams. And maybe we just happened upon something we really shouldn't have seen sometime. Alrighty, Coyote Path has saw a kitty pet rolling around a too late garden. We'll talk to them. We go to talk to Coyote Path, but right as you open your mouth, you notice stone fruit across camp and they notice stone fruit across camp and rush to greet them. The two cats intertwine their tails and quickly rush off to share a meal together. Clearly, they're too busy with couple time to pay you any mind. Hey, as long as they're having a good time, that's what matters. We're currently wondering how Liar Kid is doing, so we'll talk to them this moon. I don't see any permanent damage from our legs, so... Luckily for us, we are good there. I... Also don't see this new accessory that we're supposed to have. So I don't know how I broke the game, but whatever we were supposed to get, I don't see. <laughs> Here's Little Pa, our only warrior apprentice. He grew to be charismatic and oddly resourceful, which honestly kind of sounds like a very dangerous combination under Weasel Reed. I can see Weasel Reed being able to get Little Pa into some very, um, sketchy situations. But Little Pa is playing a prank on Comfrey Kit. Halapelt is feeling rather chipper today, but we're still gonna have a negative interaction with them. Ch that the best you can do? Apparently so. Mainfern is currently pondering on the legacy they want to leave for their kits within the clan. That's very deep thoughts for somebody so young. But we'll go and talk to her. Sound free to sign me on a solo patrol for tomorrow. I don't know what they're thinking. Is it some sort of test or are they trying to get me killed? You ask Mainfern if maybe Stonefruit just genuinely thought they were the most qualified cat for the job. Hmm, no, that couldn't possibly be it. The imagery of that is just hilarious to me. It's like just Stonefruit coming up and being like, you're going to be the only one in the nursery tomorrow, okay? Moonfern's like, are you trying to get me killed? Do you see what I'm working with here? Do you want me to die? I will die if you do this to me. And it's just a kit's like absolute carnage in the background kids are like hanging off the ceiling and biting each other and tossing moss balls everywhere love the imagery all right so fluff paw is gloomy but an other catly whisperer and he's currently refining skills and recognizing the unique needs of each kit we'll focus on tulip stripe slitter for nursery duties since they're going to be out of it tomorrow anyway We'll try a scavenger hunt with Confrey. During a scavenger hunt, Confrey Kid explores unfamiliar parts of the camp without hesitation, earning one courage. And then Fluffpaw, I think, can get away with playing as a means to get through. As Fluffpaw and Whisker Kit play Moss Ball, Fluffpaw notices how Whisker Kit takes a gentle approach when passing the ball back to them making sure it doesn't fly at their face. Empathy one. Nice, not too bad. Here's Liar Kit, now one moon old and a little bit more grown up. And Whisker Kit, who is almost a twin, but their little differences in coloration are coming forward now. Uh, we were wondering about Liar Kit, so we'll talk to her. But she wants Whisker Kit to to pretend to be their apprentice right now. Hey, Frost Whisper, can I share some of my fabulous wisdom? Okay, get ready to have your mind uh, explosion. Ahem. If you don't know what that bug is, or if you don't like it the first time, don't eat it. Thank you, Kitten of Wisdom. Willow Kid is proud of Missy Kit's growth. I think that's just so funny coming from a literal infant who is bullying. And then last but not least, here's our newest addition to the clan, Sparrowstar and Bite Specs Adopted Kit. Here was our parent, Flood, who was childish, a great speaker, and brave pathfinder, and who was a loner. While Sky is a pretty name, and I'm not really opposed to that on a gray cat, I do think I'm going to randomize that since we already have a Sky Scratch in the clan. And with so many possible prefixes, I don't really want to get caught on anything too similar. 
All right, I think we'll go with Strain Kit. I kept getting randomized water names of various sorts, which is appropriate since their parent was Flood. So we've got little Strain Kit, who is currently passionate and snuggling up to the belly of Sparrowstar, who I suppose can take a little bit more time to relax with their new addition. Seeing as Bites Back, I'm sure is again taking his opportunity to explore the territory in new ways. So we still can't patrol here. Raven Song gathers some elder leaves. Lilac Chaser is again distracted and cannot gather anything. Weasel Reed very patiently explains to Little Paw where to gather moss and why we're doing it. We get some moss at least. As our patrol is checking the border lines, we notice a clay clan sent to straight into our territory. Since this is somebody actively on our territory, we can't just ignore it. And since we are most likely to antagonize, I think we're going to go ahead and do that. This is a trespass that will not be tolerated and frankly should be reciprocated. We blatantly spread our own scent on their territory, ruining the clearly marked border lines. Our patrol catches the scent of a fox, but is it red or gray? Tracking it, we find a stocky gray fox feeding on a deer or fawn carcass. That could be a lot of food. A gray fox is unlikely to have killed a fawn this size. That could definitely be a lot of food. I'm a little nervous since we only have two cats, but it's a smaller gray. I think we'll take the risk since Leaf Bear is going to be right around the corner. We were only just smaller and outnumber, if only by a little, and surprise we're willing to fight for. The fox already full, it's driven off from the kill, and we bring back a medium amount of prey. Well, I wish we would have brought back a huge amount, but we'll take it. Huh. This is a new one. So while on patrol, Sky Scratch thinks that they had a vision from Star Clan. They notice that Swan Spot is looking at them enviously withdraws from the rest of the patrol and dismisses the dream as unimportant. The hunting patrol only bring back a very small amount of prey. Now it's definitely a new interaction, at least for me, but it sounds like Swan Spot is definitely jealous that Sky Scratch got a dream when maybe they didn't. And if Swan Spot is a good healer, I can definitely see them maybe have wanting to step into that medicine cat role to be closer to their ancestors or even just take on prestige of helping their clan, but then all of their opportunities seem to pass them by, and then they find out that somebody else is being treated, you know, a little bit more closely by Star Clan, maybe, a little bit more favorably. So maybe Swan Spot is just feeling really shirked or behind on things. And now moving into Moon 20 for the clan. You share a fresh kill with your mentor. Their story is of the past filling the air. So we'll talk to Coyote Path this moon. During a moonlit stroll, you spot a shooting star. The fleeting moment leaves you filled with wonder. You wonder what you should wish for. It's a good question. Comfrey Kit loudly complains as Tulip Tripe pulls them over to quickly groom their pelt. They may ensure go away and scurry off to the front of the crowd for their ceremony, where they are renamed to Comfrey Paw and apprentice to Stonefruit. Whisker Paw has reached the age of six moons and has been made an apprentice with Tulip Tripe as their mentor. So I guess that may also cement that they don't really know that Tulip Tripe is a parent since parents aren't really mentors. Even though they are excited to finally be made an apprentice, it takes a bit of coaxing by Tulip Stripe for Flood Kit to set forward for their ceremony. Tulip Stripe watches in pride as their name Flood Paw and touch noses with Swan Spot. Missy Kit loudly complains as Tulip Stripe pulls them over to quickly groom their pelt. They manage to wriggle away and scurry out to the front of the crowd for their ceremony, where they are renamed to Missy Paw and apprentice to Greenfin. I'm really excited to see what they all look like. All right, not too much this moon. Perhaps Whisper tells Greenfin to count on them in a difficult situation. And Swan Spot said they cover for us, but then when it came time, we got in trouble instead. Well, that's unexpected. Sky Scratch was hurt by Sparrow Star for disobeying orders. That is not a dynamic I really thought that we would do here. 
but I guess maybe Sparasaur is reverting into some bad or former negative habits in his older age. In either case, I hope Sky Scratch is okay. Oh no, Comfrey Paw. Comfrey Paw was seen racing along the border with their rival from Clay Clan. And Comfrey Paw, after meeting Kitty Pet on the border, comes back to camp disgruntled, ruffled, and with a collar around their neck. Yikes, okay, um, having to reference things I haven't needed to reference in a while. Okay. So, I know apprentices are exempt from, like, any weird events because they're still learning. So, there's no strikes for Confrey Paw actually, you know, racing along the border. That's not a thing. That would probably just get, you know, maybe punished and then move on. What concerns me is the collar. Okay, rule seven here. A warrior rejects the soft life of a kitty pet. The cat goes missing and returns with a collar that that cat must be exiled. They have a good relationship with the leader or deputy. At least one green bar, flip a coin. Heads is exiled, tails is allowed to stay. This doesn't include when a cat is forcefully taken by a two leg in patrols. I think we'd probably give Confrey Paw a little bit more of a pass because they are an apprentice. I mean, look at what happened with Cloudpaw back in his day. So let's check them out real quick here. Oh, we don't even have to put the collar on. It's a harness. Oh no, you poor thing. Okay, so I guess we can always say that it's like a harness and then they manage to break it away once her punishment is passed. I kind of like that as a possibility here. But just out of curiosity, I am going to go ahead and also see what her relationship with Sparrowsar is. I kind of have a feeling it's nothing. Well, that's honestly more than I was expecting. But again, I do think I'm going to probably just go with that route. So I just flipped a coin. Tails is allowed to say. So Confrey is okay. But I do think it'd be fun to have her wear this harness until she's like proven herself or shown that she's learned her lesson in the eyes of the clan. And I think that's going to be especially true because it just said that she met a cat. It doesn't say that she was like whisked away by two legs or did whatever for all we know. Two legs like, literally came out, tried to put a collar on her and she ran away but got stuck in the harness anyway. So this is going to be her quote unquote mark of shame in the clan. Sparrowstar is proud of Whisker Kid's growth. I just don't really reconcile that with the cat that would harm one of his own clan, but I guess he is fierce and that sometimes gets turned inwards. So improves feeling worry about an approaching storm. We're suddenly fall, so no snowstorms, but that doesn't mean it's not less dangerous. Or even Song is eavesdropping on his brother. Wild well, Chaser is checking up on the warriors. I think we'll talk to Raven Song since he's probably the one treating us. Raven Song accidentally slits while walking across camp. Without missing a beat, they catch themselves, spin on their paws, and resume walking with a flick of their tail. How do they even manage to make falling look cool? Ravensong is the coolest cat in our clan, let's be honest. Oh boy, look at all these cats. Go ahead and mediate ourselves there. Sky Scratch is helping the medicine cat properly clean a patient's wounds. I wonder if that's her own. She's hurt with a claw wound. I don't think very many cats in the clan right now have open wounds like that. It's just so strange to me that a cat that's seemingly as gentle as Sky Scratch is at the receiving end of Sparrowstar's ire. Like, I have no, no like, indication as to why that would have even happened. I mean, there's definitely some dislike there. But Sparrowstar holds more respect than dislike for Sky Scratch, so... Really don't know why. But we saw a kitty pet sitting calmly next to a dog. We saw Reed is giving some advice to Little Paw, his apprentice. That's so cute. 
Littlepaw is playing a prank on Raven's song. I can totally see Weasel Reed being egging that on. But as we got a little bit of a sneak peek at here, here's Confraypaw. She grew to be witty and a picky nest builder. And she is a mentor or apprentice to Stonefruit. Which I think is really funny because she seems to be the most outgoing, most likely to get in trouble. And she's got the privilege of being the deputy's apprentice. So I can definitely say they are being more pressure to have her kind of live with this quote-unquote shame of wearing the harness for a little bit longer. Here's Whiskerpaw. Her little nose is so cute. It looks like a little mole. But she's currently giving advice to Sparrowstar. She's mellow and dozes easily, so she and Tulip Stripe definitely gonna have a lot of uh, similarities there to talk about. But she's really pretty with her speckled and white. Then we've got Floodpaw, who's eavesdropping on Liar Kit. He's troublesome and dozes easily. His mentor's Swamp Spot. He's a very interesting looking cat with his, uh, like speckled maskness there and pants. Then we have M Missy Paw finally, who is flamboyant, also dozes easily, so I see that just kind of runs in the family here. Apprentice to Greenfin, who I wonder if Greenfin's gonna pass along quite a few of the fishing tips to Missy Paw, or if Missy Paw will kind of flounce down their own paw steps. They're already thinking about the time they caught something. Let's talk to Greenfin, though. Hello there, Frost Whisper. I, uh, saved us this prey. Would you like to share it? You know, I like seeing you, especially to share a fresh kill with. I feel like you get me, and that's a comforting thing. I'm happy to know you, Frost Whisper. Maybe that's also due to some of our interactions and dreams, too. But we also do need to insult Swan Spot, since we had a bad interaction with her this moon. Your words do not define me. I know who I am and where my loyalties lie. And that is the most confident response to an insult I've ever heard. Oh yeah, we also need to talk to Coyote Path because we were sharing some stories over Fresh Kellis Moon. Coyote Path is anxiously scanning the sky for hawks for bristling. You're pretty sure that trying to talk to them in this state would give them a heart attack or worse. Oh, poor Coyote Path. I mean, they do have kits now, so they probably are even more concerned about birds like that. I think Moonfern is going to lecture Liar Kit. Moonfern lectures Liar Kit about times of hardship in clan history, but the kit appears completely indifferent. Compassion minus one. Yeah, maybe they're a little young for some of that. Bluff Kit, however, is just soaking up knowledge about nurturing kits. And I still think he's probably going to be a bit more on the playful side here. Willow Kid accidentally bites Fluffpaw hard enough to make them bleed. Oof. But upon noticing, apologizes profusely. Empathy won. So I guess Willow Kid, despite having a bullying nature, doesn't actually really want to follow through on it. And then finally, here's Stream Kid, a little bit more grown up, catching Liar Kid climbing a bit too high. She's got such pretty pale blue eyes there. While gathering herbs or even sawing spots a bush of red berries, I hope he knows what those mean. Oh yeah, he does. It's raspberry. We're all safe. Lilac Chaser is still distracted, and I guess she's really having a rough time getting adjusted to what's going on here. Especially since she did kind of grow up learning medicine cat techniques, and then Raven Song just waltzes in, and judging by the difference in their experience and co in their contributions to their clan, does a much better job. That probably isn't sitting very well. Weasel Reed lectures Little Paw on why they live in the forest. Stonefur and Confrey Paw have a good practice session. Tulip Stripe is getting some time in with Whisker Paw. They end up sunning themselves, and after they sit down, Whisker Paw a little stiffly. After all, Tulip Stripe is basically a stranger. Tulip Stripe tells them the story of their own apprenticehood about a time when they made a dumb mistake. They make it sound funny, certainly funnier than it was at the time, and slowly Whiskerpaw opens up, so respectful, but less wooden in the way they act. Greenfin does not step up to teach Mistypaw, unfortunately, and Swanspot finds a new badger scent. The cats find enough bits of undergrowth in the nearby forest to block the opening, but the area is pretty bare. Before they know it, they're tired, thirsty, and returning home with nothing to show for it. 
Well, at least they learned. That's all of the princesses. Our final three are going to have to go on Border Patrol. While on patrol, Coyote Path notices some suspicious paw prints in the mud beneath the canopy. Coyote Path soon realizes that the paw prints smell of Moon Clan. Someone must have wandered through this section of the border recently, but it's not a threat. Alright. This was definitely a very interesting episode since we touched on a lot of new additions to the clan and kind of dove a little bit into some possible lore for some of our family members and medicine cats alike. So hopefully you all enjoy. Feel free to check out links in the description below for links to the Discord and come hang out, get a little bit of inside as to what is going on or just hang out with folks who are also interested in the games that we play here. You can also find a link to my Twitch. I live stream every Saturday at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We are currently doing a run of Pokemon and that is going interestingly. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> if you've been keeping up with the VODs, you'll understand. So, thank you as always to Parental Units for supporting the channel. It's greatly appreciated. But until next time, stay safe, stay happy. I'll see you then. And bye.